To put a paddle in the water is to feel the quiet power and possibility of Canada's past, its present, and its future. To paddle is to plug into the energies of the place, the land, the air, the water, the ancestors, the children who are yet to be born. The paddle connects us to all of that. To travel by canoe is to ponder where we came from, where we are, where we're going, who we were, who we are, and who we can be. To pull is to connect to the waters, the rocks, the forests, the skies, all the creatures of the earth, then the people. To be there, to be connected as a mix of Canadians new and old. If it is love, that binds people to places in this nation of rivers and in this river of nations, then one enduring expression of that simple truth is surely the canoe. resembles to me like a bird in flight moving forward. The action of the wings moving up and down propel it forward in such a beautiful, majestic way. In our culture, Song is a way of storytelling, and song is a way of expressing emotion and family and life. Where would we be without the connectivity in those relationships? My dad's family was part of the voyageurs, but also he was a very skilled canoeist. I can remember as a young child, he would teach us how to hold the paddle and he could make that canoe just sing. For me, it's very important to have our children experience their grandparents. When you've got that multi-generational appreciation and connectivity, I think that grounds us. As parents, you have those fond memories, those family moments of growing when the kids are 10 days old or a year or two years, and you've got those glimpses of, of memories and time. For me, it's a very emotional experience, seeing their connection. Ever since I can think back, I've always been in a canoe in the summer with my mom, with my dad, with my brother. It's home. It's a constant in my life. In today's time, it's so great to bring families back to communicating, really connecting and interacting with each other, interactions that weave a family tighter. It's returning to basics. You strip away all these materialistic things we really wanted to be part of providing that experience for others, but also connecting them on many different levels. As a family, it's just such an amazing experience just to have time to be together. And I think that just wondering about things, just standing out and looking at the stars or listening and hearing how quiet it can be, those sorts of things are just what makes it magical the meaning that they take from that will be something that becomes part of who they are. You see an individual that's hesitant and nervous, and then when you see them come back from a five-day or seven-day or longer trip, you see 
the growth. You see the self-confidence. You get the sense of their pride and their connectivity and to be a stepping stone for others to have that experience. That's why I do it. Because one glimpse of that and it's, it's awesome to be a part of. Connection to me, it's family. It's all intertwined and that's what makes it so strong and that's what makes it beautiful. It really is part of who we are. It's part of life. It's part of true raw emotion that connects us. The water's moving so quick, but at the same time, you have to slow down your thoughts. You're able to really experience the water in slow motion. I'm thinking of the maneuver of the river, how it goes, and I'll be reading the river for every step. The strength of the water is so powerful that you can't fight the water. The water is always stronger. You can't think of other things. You have to focus. When I was eight, I'd started paddling because of my parents. Paddling has had a big part in being the person I am today. I was a hard kid to handle. I had a bit of difficulties and I was kind of a lost soul. But then my coach came to me and he told me, you should really try paddling slalom competitively. And so as soon as I discovered that there was canoe as a sport, I was sold. Then I started getting my attitude in check. Instead of going to detention, I was going to training. Every night I would go to the course to paddle. So it really gave me discipline. Competing in general has taught me a lot about myself, it has taught me a lot about how to deal with relationships. I learned how to control my emotions. You always train really hard. You try to be the best paddler you can in training. You put hours and hours every week. But one of my biggest fears is if I fail, I'd be really letting down people I love. It's a hard thing to lose as an athlete. You have to remind yourself that you're not here for the results. You're here because you love paddling and you love what it brings to your life and the experiences that you've got to live. That's what you have to always remind yourself. As much as it is hard work and sacrifice, there's so many great things that come out of it, like the sensations, the friends, and the tight-knit community. I'm so privileged and so lucky to have been introduced to this sport by my parents. I know that paddling brings out the best emotion in me. I'll get in the boat and I'll instantly feel happier.
we've been paddling together for 37 years now. We love to explore. I think if there's nothing else that I hope that our lives do is to inspire people to immerse themselves more in the natural world. As a photographer, your palette is your connection with the natural world. And if I can get that image right there and then be able to share that, there's a power to that image. It's not just a photograph, it's the feelings of the landscape. You're trying to help people feel what the wind felt. How do you express the feeling of calm or the, the franticness of the rising storm? For us, the only way to express and explore that is to be able to, to share that through our photography and writing. When I was growing up, my parents putting me in a canoe at an early age and letting me go off into the bush by myself and discover, explore, get lost is, is who I am. I didn't think there was another person like me out there that enjoyed paddling and the wilderness as much as when I found Joni. There was a beauty within her that inspires. By traveling together and your various perspectives on nature kind of intertwine, he has an incredible eye, and when he sets up his camera on the tripod, this little world that he's framed in his viewfinder, that's opened my eyes to a whole other world that I couldn't see myself. get out and paddle, you tend to love places and you protect things you love. I realized that there were things going on in the human world that were threats to the wilderness areas. If you're participating in making that a better place, being less impactful on the environment, for us, that's a big goal. We hope that that's what our art brings. Artists like Tom Thompson so immortalized the connection between nature and creativity. I think that's a part of the hope, to be able to just use all of your senses in an environment like this that's ever-changing. There is so much to inspire you about life, just being out here. As long as there are places that I can paddle, where I can drink the water, catch the fish, breathe the air, as long as those places still exist, there is still hope for me to continue on with what I do. If we can inspire more people to come and visit places we see and feel the same things we feel, there's the hope that it's not lost yet. New immigrants, when they first come, you know, the pressure of establishing a new life here in a new country can be very challenging, mentally, physically, even financially. No matter where they're from, they always wanted to provide a better life, a new life. When I was in China, I was working busy. After hours were the norm and we didn't get many chances to go out to enjoy the peacefulness of life. 
not very long after I immigrated to Canada. We sort of got this sense that if you want to be Canadian, you know, being out there enjoying the water, being in a canoe, this is part of it. More and more, that sort of gave us a new perspective, a new sense, if you will, to experience the life here in Canada. That's uh, how everything started. The first time I canoed, I got in the boat, I was nervous but you uh, overcome it. I mean, trying new things gives you new faces of life. It's a very, very good way for me to enjoy the moment. Just to look, just to see, to hear, to feel. I wanna go out in a boat during a time that's my own time. Just wanna be there, thinking about nothing. If I hadn't paddled here, I wouldn't believe that you could get such a quiet, serene places. You may not see a different side of the city you call home. The fondest memories would be paddling at sunset, seeing the beautiful orange sky. It's just breathtaking. Whenever I have the chance to go out and canoe, I feel this day was lived really well. Over the next decade, you will see today's children from China or other countries, they will be on the lake paddling with the people they love, just be out there, be on the water. By learning more, by seeing more, by experiencing paddling, really makes me a little bit more Canadian every single time. I wasn't brought up with my culture, but I was early taught that it's in me. It's in my DNA. It's in my memories, my body memories of my mother and my great-grandfather and father. My mother was taught not to speak her language because it was not the right language. She was taught that her parents' culture was not the right way to live, and that was a huge impact. I call myself a second generation residential school survivor, I couldn't imagine growing up not being proud of who I am. I work with Fort William First Nation. I've worked on the mountain for six years now, and in that time, I've, I've had the pleasure of working with Fort William youth. I guess just wanting to, to engage with the youth I thought, well, you know what, let's build a canoe, start to finish. This craft, I don't know of anybody out here in Fort William First Nation that knows how to build a canoe. I don't know of anybody in my mother's generation that knows. And I thought, how could we have lost that? I thought it was the perfect key to getting these kids outside and experiencing not only just nature, but even really knowing the land that they live on within their own community. It's the perfect place to kind of awaken that in them. 
We get the students out harvesting the materials and they get to work really intimately with the materials, preparing the materials, cleaning the materials. It's not an easy thing to do. You're sweating, sometimes you get hurt, you're in the bush. Maybe a lot of people don't know how special it is, but I'm sure there's more people out there who do appreciate how sacred it is and how powerful it is. That's why I think it's important to get those kids engaged in their surroundings. The kids that build the canoe, they know how it was used. They knew it was important to the people. It's all in us. Our culture is in us. All those grandfather teachings, they, they come down to connections to the Mother Earth and connections to things that are more than us. If you feel connected to one another and if you really believe it within yourself, you could never be alone. I guess it's just a sense of being okay. And when I saw them go out in that canoe, and they didn't tip, and they didn't sink, and they all had fun, they did it, and I was proud of them. Kids are faced with a lot of, a lot of stuff in their life. Some of them are, are put up with some pretty terrible stuff, and if you could give them something to be proud of, that was that was the best for me. It was all worth it. I hope that they feel pride within themselves as being like family, you know, a place of home. Like this is where I'm from. Getting out into the water and feeling nature in such a personal way gives me the thought that these kids will have hope too. They're passing on that knowledge for them to pass on so they could then teach their youth to be proud. If they're making the time and effort to come up and learn, then by all means, Give them all that you have. There's a temptation to think that the canoe is a thing of the past, but I also think it's got lessons to take us forward. Paddling, whether it's in a kayak or a stand-up paddleboard, it offers possibilities for deeper learning. You could always be a little bit more calm and still in your heart. You could always pay a little more attention. It's about balance. It's about reciprocity. It's about connection. In a world that's increasingly disconnected, in a world that's increasingly robbing itself of the opportunity for long, quiet contemplation and reflection, a canoe brings you back to some of those basic rhythms. That feeling of being connected to the natural world, but also being connected to yourself, it does provide an opportunity to shape, define, nurture, who and what we are. To me, paddling is strength. Paddling is hope. Paddling is beauty. Paddling is self-cleansing. Paddling's just fun. Paddling is life. In a sense, it's everything. <laughs> <laughs>